Thank you very much, Abraham. Please, let's take our seats. Um, just for good record, um, my deputy was not scheduled to come to this meeting because by the time we put together this meeting, he didn't have the job he has. <laughs> so I just ambushed him here and told him to remain behind for this meeting because it is an important meeting. And uh, I must say, uh, uh, good professor, that uh, if there was an examination on your first uh, assignment, I can say you have passed with very good colors. Uh, because at the very least, you understand why we are here. There are many who would not understand why we are here. <laughs> and um, in the past, I have tried uh, when such difficult subjects as the economy and taxes are being discussed, not many people want to participate because uh, it's a very difficult subject. It's not very popular. And so uh, populists don't like hard stuff. I'm, I'm very happy that uh, you at least pick four items. That is very good. <laughs> Distinguished taxpayers, ladies and gentlemen, we dedicate this day to honor you, the individuals and businesses whose contributions to our national revenue mobilization efforts have enabled us to finance the national budget. You have provided us with the necessary resources to ambitious and ambitiously propel Kenya towards self-reliance and inclusive development. This event is therefore devoted to celebrating you for demonstrating in word and in deed two outstanding patriotic qualities, consistent hard work and the dutiful remittance of taxes as stipulated by law and expected of all good citizens, both as individuals and as corporates. Your patriotism is the foundation of our nation's economic resilience and progress because efficient revenue mobilization is essential to finance the delivery of public services, investing in infrastructure development, and providing resources required to safeguard peace, stability, and national unity. Kenya's socioeconomic transformation is overdue by decades because we delayed too long in enhancing domestic revenue mobilization to the level needed to ensure sustainability and economic takeoff. As a result, we lack the resources needed for development to secure Kenya's economic independence. We are a proudly democratic, free, and independent country. Independence confers on us the authority to decide our destiny. But that authority for us to decide our destiny comes with responsibility. And that responsibility is the responsibility that each and every one of us must carry on our shoulders to make sure that we contribute in every way possible to making Kenya free, democratic, and independent. And of course, the responsibility that comes with it also brings accountability, that all of us must ultimately account for our actions. Let me say this, that We've lacked the resources needed for development to secure Kenya's economic independence while employment continues to affect our youthful population with over 5 million young people, men and women, seeking employment and more than 850,000 entering the labor market every year. 
these are staggering numbers, that we have 5 million young people out there and 850 million join them every year. We have to be intentional, we have to be deliberate in making sure that we create real jobs for these young people. It is the reason why housing is a priority for us, because it creates jobs. It is a reason why investing in technology, in the digital space, in the 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic is a priority because it creates digital jobs. It is the reason why making sure that we have bilateral labor agreements across many countries is a priority because it creates jobs. And it is the reason why our county aggregation, special economic zones, and the current conversation we are having about how do we enhance our manufacturing capabilities is a priority because it creates jobs. Similarly, our nation has suffered from a severe housing deficit which has pushed the cost of housing beyond the reach of many urban workers, forcing them to live in crowded, unsanitary, and often insecure dwellings. Our farmers have worked tirelessly, but have yet to benefit from improved agricultural techniques, post-harvest loss mitigation, economies of scale, value addition and export manufacturing. And it is the reason why we are expanding and deploying more resources in that space. Additionally, our country's fast potential to be competitive in the digital economy, creative industry, and innovation has remained largely untapped due to underinvestment in both technical and vocational education and training, as well as in the necessary digital and ICT infrastructure. Again, it is the reason why we sat around the table in this very space here with our ICT uh, ministry, with uh, the Communication Authority of Kenya, with um, Kenya Power to make sure that we use our Kenya Power network across Kenya to piggyback and drive our fiber optic footprint around Kenya. Further, endeavors to ensure the health of our people by providing high quality health care have been undermined by limited access and high costs because medical facilities have been few and under-equipped, while treatment has typically overwhelmed majority households' budgets and exacerbated hardship. And it is again the reason why we are rolling out our universal health coverage, a very bold initiative, and I promise you it's going to succeed because I can already see the signs of success in our universal health coverage plan. At the same time, our economic growth has faced major challenges from within and without, including rising energy prices and interest rates severe impacts of climate change and geopolitical upheavals, factors that have driven up commodity prices and significantly increased our debt burden. We have been navigating uncharted waters for a while now, with more than half of our revenues going to service debt and thus denying us resources to de for development and for critical services. The bold policies outlined in our bottom-up economic transformation agenda aim to drive shared prosperity by reducing the cost of living, enhancing labor productivity, and creating millions of jobs annually. This is why we are investing in developing high-capacity value chains such as agriculture, micro, small, and medium enterprises, housing, healthcare, the digital superhighway, and the creative industries. To execute these transformative uh, strategies, we agreed with the people of Kenya to take very difficult 
but necessary decisions to restore economic stability and guarantee fiscal sustainability in the short and medium term as the first step towards setting our nation on a path to economic prosperity. We also resolved to radically reduce non-priority expenditure and eliminate wastage to ensure that every shilling of national revenue goes as far as possible to deliver for our citizens. I have heard my CS for National Treasury speak here. I'm not responsible for his eloquence <laughs> or his firmness. I think he has just seen the reality of where we are and that we must move together. You and your team, um, John, have my full support as you lead the way in making sure that we explain ourselves to the people of Kenya on matters that require domestic mobilization. And I agree with you entirely in what you have said. We need to begin to think about your accrual accounting is spot on. Your zero budgeting is spot on. We need to begin to explain why any department, any ministry requires every shilling. If you required it last year, you still must come back and explain to us why you required this year so that we can make sure that we are doing the right thing. And the third thing that you have said that is spot on is the issue of tax exp expenditure. We must have a honest conversation as Kenyans. If we are spending 400 billion shillings every year on tax refunds, and in some cases, I mean, that have been brought to our attention, as it was done with um, our universal health program, you know very well that in some instances, like in some hospital here in Kino, they were doing more surgeries than Kenyatta National Hospital. Some saying something hospital on the third floor of some building in Kino. It is not possible. You know, it is the same thing. We now have um, people who claim tax refunds because they run bakeries. Because bread is a very important thing to Kenya. Bread is very sensitive. And we are paying a lot of money to many bakeries. But you know what they are doing? They have more accountants in those bakeries than people who bake any bread. The same way, one hospital I know had more accountants than medical staff because they were gaming the NHIF. This, ladies and gentlemen, we must have a candid conversation and stop it. John, you have my support as you go after those people who game the system. We must stop them. And finally, we must also make sure that government does not pay more money for services or goods than we should. And it is the reason why the e-procurement that you have talked about here, it's been on the cards for far too long. This is the time to implement, to implement e-procurement. We must be transparent. It must be open. How much is government paying for this service or that product? And does, how does it compare with prices in the market. There is absolutely no reason why government should be paying 10, 20, 50 percent more than the actual prices in the market. And the way to make it transparent is to put it on a digital platform so that Kenyans know who supplied what, at what price, who was awarded, and we get the benefit of making sure 
And this morning, I made a telephone call, and uh, your PS knows we already have a team that is working, working with our colleagues from Indonesia who have done a wonderful job on making sure that e-procurement works. We must learn from best practice and make sure that we too as a country move in the steps that will make Kenya accountable and deal firmly with issues of corruption in government. Additionally, we are committed to significantly increase domestic revenue mobilization by ensuring that every eligible taxpayer contributes their fair share to support development and services with no one, and I mean no one, evading their duty or benefiting unfairly from others' contribution. I am pleased to announce that our collective efforts are yielding positive results. In October 2024, this year, the chairman, the CG have said this. Inflation dropped to 2.7 percent, the lowest in 17 years. This stability resulted from favorable weather, consistent fuel prices, and deliberate fiscal measures to support our food production efforts. Our currency, on, one, on the other hand, has strengthened against the dollar, moving from 160 in January to 129 in October. And our GDP grew by 5.6 in 2023, up from 4.9 in 2022, indicating a solid economic recovery trajectory. To sustain this progress and promote fairness, we must enhance equity and effectiveness of tax revenue mobilization. This means that our tax measures must be fair and every eligible entity must pay. It also means that the partnership between government and taxpayers must be based on a dynamic reciprocity with the government using effective policies and efficient public investment to enable taxpayers to thrive, create jobs, and create wealth, and make money. As, I, as can be noted in this year's theme, trade is vital that requires robust facilitation to grow our economy. For a while now, we have been making significant progress in improving the ease of doing business, enhancing Kenya's appeal to local and foreign investors, streamlining the regulatory environment, and empowering businesses. I'm sure next week, the National Treasury will be forwarding proposals that uh, John spoke about to Parliament for us to create a better environment for us to do business. Proposals such as tax amnesty that provides a win-win outcome both for taxpayers and also um, uh, the, Kenyan, the Kenya Revenue Authority and many other pro uh, proposals that is good for business because when business is doing well, we can collect more taxes, and we can all do well. We have resolved to establish a fair tax system that relies on simplicity and transparency to encourage compliance. Consistent collaboration between the National Treasury, the Kenya Revenue Authority, and other stakeholders has provided a robust platform for the development of inclusive policies, especially for micro, small, and medium enterprises. And I must commend our judiciary for setting the parameters for engagement between the public and government agencies. That public participation now has parameters that are clear, that are understandable, that makes it possible for government to consult with citizens, but also give institutions like the National Assembly, the Senate, and other institutions the leverage to exercise their mandate as is provided for 
in our constitution without necessarily impeding the rollout and the execution of government programs. Kenya's current revenue collection is significantly below the East African community target of 25% of GDP. Our aim is to raise revenue from our current 14% to 22% of GDP within the next decade and to promote compliance from the current 70% to 90% by 2026-2027, expanding the tax base by addressing hard-to-tax sectors such as the informal economy and digital business will require collaboration, innovation, digitization, technology, and determination. Technology is critical to all modern transactions, as we all know. Automated systems including electronic data interchange and streamlined customs processes can significantly reduce costs, improve efficiency, and enhance transparency. There is, we all know, some measure of resistance on matters of technology and digitization. I must congratulate the KRA staff that they have finally come round and agreed that let's go technology. Congratulations. I am not saying you had refused. I'm saying it was slow. But I'm finally um, uh, informed, and now there is clarity, and there is harmony, and there is um, concurrence. And we have all agreed that that is the way we are going. And we are mobilizing both local and foreign technology providers. We have built a big consortium of technology providers to assist our Kenya Revenue Authority in making sure that we create a seamless ecosystem that will make sure that whatever is due to KRA is paid without anybody, any member of either KRA or any member of government taking advantage of the situation through effective use of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the new Gava Connect API, KRA will enhance service delivery, transparency, and also reduce tax evasion. I am proud to note that a tax-based expansion strategy enabled the government to generate an extra $24.6 in the year 2023-2024 and added 1.2 million new taxpayers to the national revenue base. In particular, the strategy has succeeded in bringing landlords into the tax net through the monthly rental income program and likewise enhanced systems including the electronic tax invoice management system have reduced VAT fraud, enabling us to mobilize $314 billion from over 280,000 VAT registered taxpayers. We are making real progress, and, I, and I'm very happy with the progress. I got a report from the KRA team uh, last week on the interventions we put in place. We've just started, and I'm very confident that shortly we will get all systems, will be all systems go, and um, we will make significant progress. And we will reduce the number of uh, uh, outings my friend has to go to queue in certain places. I commend millions of patriotic Kenyans for performing their patriotic duty and filing 8 million tax returns by June 30th, 2024, surpassing the target by 26%. Tax compliance is not only a legal and civic duty, but also signifies our shared commitment to contribute towards national transformation. I'm very happy that 
even though many people call me names in terms of our adventure and our program to collect tax, more people are now realizing that that is the direction to go. I'm very happy. I would also like to recognize Dr. Lillian Nyawanda. Where is she? Let's clap for that. Congratulations, Lillian, Commissioner for Domestic Taxes. Sorry, Commissioner for Customs and Border Control. For all the efforts that you're doing and your team. We recognize those efforts and we commend you. Let me also recognize Mrs. Rispa Modoni Simiu, Commissioner for Domestic Taxes. Where is she? There. And your team for your outstanding performance in surpassing your tax collection targets by 105%. Congratulations. <laughs> Madam Nyawanda surpassed her target by 102%. <laughs> Through better infrastructure, inclusive services, and increased wealth and job creation, we are laying the foundation for rapid national transformation. This is why we must all take a stand against tax evasion and corruption, which continues to pose significant challenges. Tax evaders should not be allowed to hide resources or to the people of Kenya while benefiting from public services. Similarly, those engaged in corruption should not enjoy benefits gained through the sabotage of public service delivery and the undermining of public infrastructure development through bloated bills and unnecessary and unjustified payments. I urge Kenyans to take advantage of KRA's iWeasel platform, which enables the public and staff to report malpractice, and I commend those who have done so already by reporting 883 cases which led to the recovery of 4.3 billion Kenya shillings. To all those who made reports, I want to say congratulations. You are true patriots of the Republic of Kenya. Additionally, 255 KRA staff members have been investigated. And I want to promise you that firm and decisive action will be taken against those who will be found to be culpable. It is critical for us to uphold integrity, to secure public confidence, motivate tax compliance, and promote efficiency and accountability. This is the way to ensure that every shilling of taxpayers' money is fully applied to its intended purpose. I reiterate my undertaking to remain a responsible steward of public resources and to ensure that no funds entrusted to the government will be lost under my watch. We have made significant progress in enhancing transparency and efficiency through digital solutions to combat theft, wastage, and corruption, and we remain committed to furthering this effort to ensure Kenyans, to assure Kenyans of maximum efficiency in resource utilization. Today, we launch KRA's ninth corporate plan, a five-year roadmap focused on improving efficiency, service delivery, and compliance through technology and process optimization. I commend KRA and the National Treasury for their work in developing this plan and urge them that nothing except the full implementation of this strategic plan shall be acceptable by me. Accordingly, I call upon government agencies to cooperate fully with KRA in strengthening revenue mobilization. Once again, 
I salute the distinguished taxpayers of Kenya and extend the appreciation of a grateful nation for your patriotic contribution to national self-reliance and transformation. I congratulate each of the outstanding taxpayers recognized today and say that your exemplary tax compliance is a model of committed nation building. As, you as we celebrate you, we honor the critical contribution of every taxpayer of our nation's self-reliance and to our collective efforts to build a prosperous and resilient future. It is important that we work together and I'm very proud of this moment that we are making steps towards ensuring that we collect every shilling that we can and appropriate it properly and use it for the intended purpose and make sure that it's good, it is put to good use. I'm informed that um, um, the discussions have already been done from this month going forward, there will be adequate facilitation of the Kenya Revenue Authority so that they can do their job and do it well. The Kenya Revenue Authority, therefore, ninth corporate plan is now launched and the Gava Connect API platform is also officially unveiled. Thank you very much. God bless you. And God bless our great country, Kenya. Asante Nisana. Another round of applause for His Excellency. As we now invite you, Your Excellency, to come and press the buzzer. And allow me, we may take our seats kindly. I'll request that we have the Deputy President, uh, His Excellency, the Prime Cabinet Secretary, to flank you, the CS, Chair KRA, uh, Humphrey Watanga, and the PS to come and flank His, flank his Excellency as we now have the official launch of the ninth corporate plan and the api platform so with them standing there it's good it's a video launch so your excellency we will be yeah lillian you may also come and the other lady that was honored we can give them a clap as they're coming for a job well done it's a video launch so i'll count you down your excellency In three, two, one, let's have the video play. Our ninth corporate plan is the blueprint for the future. A future where technology takes center stage, where data drives decisions, and where every Kenyan is included in the tax system. These five pillars lay the foundation for an efficient tax system, bringing Kenya closer to its development goals while enhancing service delivery for all. Supporting this blueprint is the KRA API platform, our leap into a new era of tax integration. Through this powerful tool, businesses and developers can seamlessly access and interact with KRA services. The future of tax administration starts today. Welcome to the new era of the Kenya Revenue Authority. Another round of applause. And that marks the ninth, uh, the ninth corporate plan and the API platform. I'll request that then we have His Excellency the President the CS Treasury, uh, together with the Chair of KRA, to remain on stage with His Excellency as we now proceed to the award ceremony. I'll request that the rest, PS, you may also join His Excellency as we now proceed to the award ceremony. And at this point, I will have Beatrice read the first citation for the first award. Beatrice, over to you. Your Excellency, sir, the following taxpayers are presented for the Presidential Distinguished Taxpayers Award for the financial year 2023-2024. We'll start with top tax 
Society. This award recognizes the institution of higher learning that demonstrated the greatest level of support to local communities to improve tax compliance through innovative tax literacy approaches. This award goes to KCA University. KCA University, kindly make your way to the stage so that you receive that award kindly. KCA University, Top Tax Society. A round of applause kindly as they receive their award. The second award, Most Facilitative Government Agency in Tax Enforcement and Recovery. This award goes to Directorate of Criminal Investigation. A round of applause kindly. Directorate of Criminal Investigation. <laughs> Most Improved Taxpayer Post ADR. This award goes to Shirdi Chemicals Limited. A round of applause kindly.